Thank you, everybody, for joining me on another episode of Dana Palooza. It is a special treat tonight because we have not just one guest, we have two guests. And it is for <laughs> dos. <laughs> That's the Spanish for tonight. <laughs> um, we have two amazing uh, singers and songwriters. Um, first, let me go ahead and uh, introduce. Uh, we have Destiny Beard. Uh, for those of you, you might remember Destiny. Destiny's kind of like one of our regulars. She's kind of like, it's kind of like Cheers here on Dana Palooza, you know, everybody knows your name. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so Destiny, singer, songwriter, um, her social medias, you can follow her on Destiny Beard Music on Facebook, Destiny Beard Instagram, and her website, www.destinybeard.com. Thank you. <laughs> you oh. can also follow her on TikTok. What's your TikTok, Destiny? Uh, it's my name, just Destiny Beard on TikTok. Yep. Destiny Beard on TikTok. Hi. So make sure to follow that, um, where you can follow all the wonderful musical updates, see the short videos, and uh, you can go ahead and subscribe, like, share, follow, do all that wonderfulness. Now, let's get to the other guests of our show. Uh, you may remember Brian as well. Brian is also becoming somewhat of a regular here. He has been feeling the cheers vibe. <laughs> so <laughs> Brian Hardy, um, He, while some of you may know him as the wrestler, we're talking about him as the singer songwriter tonight. Uh, social medias for Brian Hardy. Uh, follow him at Brian Hardy Music on Facebook. Uh, make sure to check out uh, Brian's wrestling collection on YouTube. See all the wonderful wrestling me memorabilia. And if you're a wrestling fan like me, it's a trip down memory lane in the squared circle. <laughs> and, Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it is. And breaking news also for Brian. He has a new book out. It is Wrestling With Life, dot, 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 rocking all night, the Brian Hardy story. Available on Amazon. Go ahead and pick up your copy today. <laughs> right now. Right now. Go do it. Literally right okay. after the show ends. Okay. Go right to Amazon.com. Boom. Go, go, yep. Go do it. <laughs> Thanks for having you know, me on the show today. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, I'll let everybody know I will be picking up a copy of that book. Um, so I will be uh, kind of reviewing and posting on Dana Palooza. Um, let's not think. Uh, if you need to get something for your loved one for Valentine's Day, <laughs> wrestling fan, it's a good Perfect. Valentine's Day item. Uh, or if you're, you know, St. Patty's Day, it's also another thing that you can enjoy <laughs> around the mm -hmm. holiday. <laughs> Absolutely. I think Any it covers holiday. all major holidays. It does. If you want to buy does. somebody something for like President's Day, it, it doesn't matter. Like whatever you yes. want to do, just, yes. just buy it, you know? Yes. And then Destiny, you have some of your uh, music, right, with uh, – Midnight uh, Syndicate. Yep. And that's on your website. So that can also be a Valentine's, St. Patrick's Day. Roll all 12 holidays into one and go ahead and purchase. <laughs> yes. Or it could be a late Groundhog's Day present as well. Exactly. Listen to it over and over and over again. <laughs> so. Uh, thank you for being on the show, both of you. It's wonderful to have you again. <laughs> thank you. So, um, I'm curious for both of you. Do you remember the first time you started, like, singing? Was it something, like, you just did around the house? Or, you know, you did with your friends? Or did you do shows? How was your first involvement as a singer-songwriter growing up? Ladies first. Oh, oh. Um, oh my God. <laughs> well, um, when I was growing up, um, I was always listening to my mom sing around the house. Um, she's an incredible singer. And when I was in, I think it was junior high school, we had a musical and I was given just one, just one line. It was like 15 seconds long. And I remember on stage, I just started singing it. And it was, I think I was 10 years old. And at that point, <laughs> It was just something sort of clicked in my brain and I went, Hey, I really like this. This is, this is fun, you know? Um, 
See, I would say by like 10, 11, that was kind of like, for me, I'm just like, I want to sing. No matter how it works out, I want to do music for like life. And now I am here, 31, and still doing crazy music and still working at it. So, yeah. <laughs> there you uh, go. For me, I'd have to say I was like, I mean, my earliest memories, I can remember being like two years old and dancing around the house to like uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, Achy Breaky Heart, which is like sort of <laughs> embarrassing. Um, I remember like when Red Hot Chili Peppers had put out like Blood Sugar Sex Magic and that kind of stuff. And, um, so the, the genres of music were very eclectic, like for me as a kid and everything was on a cassette tape. Um, as a kid. Oh. <laughs> yeah so it's it's dating me right now but um but at the same time i think that the first real time that it like hit me hit me like oh i'm gonna do this i was four years old i heard uh, uh dookie by green day and um that entire album i think obviously like many punk rockers the very first song you know do you have the time to listen to me wine you know basket case just resonated in my head and I was like, Hey, this guy, Billy Joe Armstrong is doing this. I'm going to do this when I'm older. And, um, at 10 years old, I got my first guitar for Christmas and it didn't stop from there. And then now I'm 33 and yeah. from, from Maryland here where I live all the way over to the West coast in Los Angeles, whiskey, a go, go all the way to Mexico and all around, you know, releasing a new release every single year uh, since oh, 2015 wow. and <laughs> trying to stick with it, you know, trying to keep doing it. So That's awesome. Yes. Nice. Um, you know, I, I thought if you wanted to hear when I first started uh, with music, because I started at a young age as well, too, I could share that story with you guys as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when I was little, um, I was very theatrical, as I still am to this day. I stayed in my roots. <laughs> um, but um, I did uh, I did a talent show when I was uh, ten years old. Ten oh. years old, I did uh, I did the Lion King, awesome. uh, all all by myself. <laughs> awesome. Three characters, um, and I sang Akuna Matata. Nice. Um, and I did all the <laughs> I did all the voices and. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I did that walking back and forth. And um, I remember like, I, <laughs> I look at myself back then where, you know, it's just like, you know, when you're first starting out singing and you're kind of nervous and you just kind of like do the back and forth thing. And then as you get more comfortable, you know, your body starts moving and everything. But when everybody's first watching you at first, you know, you're just kind of like, I'm doing this. Hope you <laughs> like it. <laughs> your nerves. Were your nerves yeah. going? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm like don't worry about singing do more voices <laughs> that's awesome but that's what I did uh it was that song and um uh there's still like an old VHS copy of that and uh I that's where like humble beginnings but do you remember like at first like when you were starting singing did you have the stage fright and nerves <laughs> how did you deal with it yeah, I I still have them. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever outgrow it, honestly. I still, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> uh, back then, I'd say probably not. Now, definitely. Um, back then, I was just a whippersnapper, man. I was like a firecracker. I didn't care. I was just <laughs> all eyes on me all the time. And then now as an adult, I'm kind of like, uh, like, you know, like, I don't know if I want these people judging me so hard, <laughs> you know, if I sing the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or play, you know, the wrong thing on guitar. Um, I don't know. It comes second nature. It's like breathing. So I really don't pay attention to it, but it's still in my mind plays tricks on me. and freaks me out. makes me go. Yeah. Everybody's paying attention to this when half the people don't even have a clue that I'm flubbing something or messing it up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like the biggest struggle, like as a musician, like, cause you know, like if something happens during a set, you know, and then afterwards everyone's like, that was so great. You're like, why did I panic for three yep. minutes? Like nobody <laughs> even heard it. Yep, you knew you screwed screwed it up, but nobody yeah. else around yeah. had any clue. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I um oh man, I remember the first time I did screw up. It was uh for a company. It was a theater show for Wizard of Oz. I, I was off 
key off. <laughs> <laughs> it was like somewhere. It was like not. <laughs> no. Like people turn and look. I go, I think it's the other day and there's something like <laughs> Not me. I, I live here in Emerald City. I don't sing off key. <laughs> I, I didn't even know you were like a theater guy. Like I think yeah. that's great because I mean, even as a kid, like I grew up loving like musicals and stuff like that. Like oh, yeah. a lot of people don't even know that about me, but like I grew up loving like Oklahoma and stuff like that, and just I would sing along to that kind of stuff when I was younger. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think that's great. I could just see, oh, what a beautiful yeah. <laughs> so, I Tomorrow, like every, tomorrow Brian's going to be like, there's a Surrey fringe. <laughs> They're going to be like, damn. I, I, I knew, like, every song off of Oklahoma. It was crazy. My cousin was in theater, and uh, she would do like plays at the high school all the time. So, I mean, as a, as a kid, I grew up watching things like My Fair Lady and stuff yeah. like that. And it was like... You know, people were like, man, I was into Oliver. I was into all that kind of stuff. Like, where I'm like, <laughs> I was never in plays, but I loved plays. I loved musicals. I loved all that oh, stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yep. Uh, my very first one was Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Nice. Right on. Because my mom saw it live with Donny Osmond in Chicago. Oh. And like, she would play that song, the uh, CD over and over and over. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't really need to audition because I knew all the words. <laughs> I don't funny. know what part we're going to pick him, but we're going to put him somewhere. He knows everything. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but let's get let's get back to you guys. Um, so is there a dream performing uh, venue that you guys really want to perform at someday? Oh. That's a tough one. <laughs> Do you know, Brian? Because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, mine's already been completed. I wanted to, since the time I was like 11, 12 years old, I wanted to play the Whiskey A Go Go in West Hollywood, California, and on the Sunset Strip. And, um, I would always tell people like all the time when I was a kid, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And they were like, yeah, right, kid. Like you're breathing hot air. You're never going to accomplish it. This and that. And I was 28 years old and I'm pulling out my phone and I'm like taking a picture and I'm like, tonight I am playing at the whiskey a go go. And like yeah. everyone back home here in Maryland was like, are you freaking kidding me? And then like to see like my name up on the big marquee out front on the whiskey a go go sign was like the coolest thing that I think I could have ever experienced in the world as a musician. Because when you're inside of that venue, it's like almost as if like it sounds, you know, weird to say. And once again, it all depends on what you believe in in life. But like it was almost like you could feel the presence of like Jim Morrison. You could feel the presence of like all the other bands that have ever graced that stage. The Ramones, Motley Crue, like, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And it was just absolutely captivating. It was like leaving there. I felt like I left a part of my energy there on that stage where I'm like, yeah, now like the next person that performs here is going to feel like my energy resonating off these walls in this building. So that's fantastic. That's amazing. Holy crap. <laughs> that's really cool. Nice. Um, gosh, if I, I think if I really like ultimate like bucket list, I think for me, I kind of always wanted to be as part of cast for like um, for Phantom on Broadway, just to do just to be on that stage at Majestic Theater. I think would have been really cool because I went to go see it in the audience, and that's always been sort of like just like an obsession of mine. So I think that would have been really cool, or like really just maybe any performance like either on Broadway or off Broadway, just to say that I did it. You know, I think that would be, I think that would be bucket list worthy. For me that's awesome yeah. yeah that's really cool i think any like anybody that would you know do that type of of music or that genre of music or anything would definitely want to you know be in new york city for sure on broadway yeah just to say like you did like even for a day would just be so cool <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. Not, I would just sing openly in public, so there's no one here. Fans, my stage, just give me a stage. Yeah, I, I think if if I had something, because yeah, I'm not like as a bigger mu uh, music stars as you guys, you know, I'm happy go lucky, but uh, I think if for just for fun and giggles or something, probably maybe somewhere in England. 
Yes, that would be cool. <laughs> That'd be very cool. Brixton Academy, my guy. Yep. Maybe next that plan is spot on, spot on with his vocals. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> So if that happens someday, I'm going to take a picture like you. Yes. Put a picture and be like, guess where I am? <laughs> it's so hard, man. The critics, especially in the music. I mean, music industry, wrestling industry, entertainment industry, period. It's oh, so yeah. hard because like you do something and, you know, they used to say a picture is worth a thousand words. But now, even if you get the picture of yourself doing it nowadays, they're like, that's photoshopped. Like you didn't really do that. You didn't really play there, this and that. And then the videos pop up on YouTube and they're like, ugh next thing to hate on you about like you know what can we what can we figure out next it's exactly. it's hard but i mean yeah you, it's picture worthy man i tell people i'm like when the yeah. dust settles and the smoke clears that's all you have left is the photographs to remember the you know stuff by yeah yep. definitely <laughs> um what are some of your uh, song favorite songs to sing by other musicians. Do you have a uh, kind of like a little playlist, or are there songs you sing in the car? <laughs> oh, wait, these are like really tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm letting her go first for all of them. Oh I'm, I've got to think about um, this for a second. Oh my gosh, wow, that's like man. Um. So if I'm singing in the car and there's nobody else, I'm usually rocking out. Like I lately I've been like super into ghost. So like anything by them, I'm just like, all right, I'm just singing this. I'm just driving around central PA. And I'm like, I hope no one's like listening with the windows down. Cause you know, some of the words, but um, I would say them or like, um, like a lot of like symphonic metal too. Like I'll listen to like Camelot and like Nightwish and stuff like that. Um, I think other than that, like, oh gosh, I think my absolute favorite cover to sing is always around Halloween time. And I always, my friends always tease me about it. Cause they're like, you do this song like every five years. And I'm like, I have to, it's like a, it's like a cryptid. I appear like every few years I do this song for Halloween and then I disappear. Um, but it would be probably Sally song from nightmare before Christmas. Cause that's just such a staple item of like my childhood. So like, that's I'll definitely. try that like every so often and people are like oh my god you sang that again i'm like yeah it's a thing. <laughs> my go-to i can't not <laughs> for me i would say um well it's hard because the thing is most people would look at me and go you know you were a punk rock singer for years you've done surf rock so instantly people's minds go to the ramones or the beach boys or you know now i do country so they'd be like oh you, you love country like yeah i love country i listen to country i listen to all that stuff but if it was just me by myself trying to figure out what I'm going to sing to make me happy, it's going to be like The Power of Love by Huey Lewis in the News, or it's going to be Your Love by the Outfield. So 80s rock, you know, like I, it's it's weird. I don't know. but Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. I think it's only fair that I, I answer to you. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's you. Sometimes, sometimes I like to mess with people, and uh, I'll play uh, Leonard Skinner, and I'll be like, "Big wheels turning," because I want to, especially because it's icy right now. <laughs> so people will be like, <laughs> "They'll go faster or slower." <laughs> yeah, See my car turning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> big so, wheels. Yeah. yeah, I like to do that, and I like big wheels, and they're like, "It's hey." <laughs> <laughs> That's usually one that I like to just do for for joke and fun. Um, I uh, I have such a collection of taste, so it really depends on my mood. You know, sometimes I'm like, I want this or I want that. Oh, you know, you. so um, uh -huh. uh, I do listen to Fozzy because I'm such a big Jericho holic, <laughs> and uh, gotta love Judas, man. Yeah, and sometimes like I, like I'll sing that, and people are like, <laughs> they roll the window up. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I think it's great. Um, so there's that, and then there's like '80s. I'm such an '80s because I was born in the '80s, so I'm the yeah. '80s child. Uh, I listen to like a collection. Like I'll listen to "Video Killed the Radio Star." I'll listen to. Uh, the Buggles, I'll listen to Love Shack. 
Uh, are you gonna Are you gonna roll down your windows and like scream the Cody word or uh, Cody Rhodes theme song at the top of your lungs? Oh yes, I'm like adrenaline, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm like, do, 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 do. hey, it's green light, go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's like a playlist of like music that's good, like roll down music and then roll up music. <laughs> yes, and like, um, and it's it's interesting because sometimes like Tilly's sitting there next to me, and like I'll be like, yeah, and she'll be like, wow. <laughs> I feel like there's a million different answers for a million different things when it comes to music. Like my roll down the window song, I don't yeah. even listen to a lot of rap, but it would be like California Love by Tupac. Like, yeah. I don't know, I don't know why, but it would just have the speakers bumping and I'd look over at the person next to me like, yeah, what's yeah. up, you know, <laughs> keep in mind, I'm doing all of this inside of a minivan, you know, it's hard to be cool in a minivan. So yeah, I, I drive a minivan. I think I'm cool. I'm just yeah. <laughs> I make fun of myself for driving a minivan, but I'm like, Hey, it's cool. It is what it is. I got a million kids. So it works. There you go. There you go. See, see, like I'm, I'm someone who likes to do the element of surprise. I like for them to think that I'm gonna do a rock, and then I'll put a pop song in or something. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, <laughs> the demeanor changes. <laughs> like this is my jam. <laughs> Just drive away. <laughs> Probably the funniest has got to be one time is um, I was listening to Bad to the Bone, and then all these bikers came out. And they were like dri <laughs> driving, so like they were like behind me and like passing and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Something straight out of a movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, look, it's Wild Hogs too. <laughs> 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 the Danapalooza edition. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, has there ever been really a difficult venue to perform? Not because of the people but maybe because of the setup or the acoustics <laughs> man i i wouldn't like i had one it wasn't really like difficult per se but it was weird um so my dad who does like um he does fantasy art and um he was invited to sweden now this was about i think 11 years ago to do like a gallery and it was in this castle and it was like once a lifetime opportunity. So we're all excited. We're going, um, I had just come out with my first album. And so they asked if I would sing. So I'm totally freaking out. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm singing in your castle. Um, <laughs> and they had me singing in this courtyard. So it's outdoors. Everybody's sitting in tables in front of me and they're all just having their lunch or whatever. So I start singing and the weirdest thing happens. I've, like I couldn't hear myself. The acoustics, like, they were kind of cool, but like there was no like monitor at all. So I'm like, I have no idea if I'm even like in the right line. Um, and all of a sudden, everybody in the audience just like laid their head back and they all just closed their eyes. So I'm up there. I'm feeling like like Jigglypuff, like a Pokemon that just I just put everybody to sleep. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? And so I went through a couple of songs and I got off the stage. No one clapped. Nothing. I'm like, whoa, this is weird. I've walked into like a Twilight Zone. And this guy comes up and he's like, that's a good thing. And I'm like, that everybody slept while I sang? And they're like, yeah, that means you did good. And I'm like, okay. So apparently if you can't hear yourself and everyone falls asleep, that's a good experience. But it was super weird for me. I was just like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever done. It was awesome, but <laughs> definitely, definitely different. So I would say that would be my most difficult because I wasn't really sure <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I can't tell you the amount of times that I have performed where the electricity has cut out in certain venues. Oh um, no, like the breaker blue. Um, so that's that's my younger years. Like that would probably be anybody's like, oh my gosh, freak out moment. Usually they have to reset the breaker. If, if you if they have to, they'll put a generator in or whatever the case is, real fast, and then they get back to the show. Um, but as far as like a little comparison to the story she just told, um, and it, and I had monitors, but playing anywhere outdoors is so hard. And I actually was playing in Mexico at a place called heaven beach bar in Cancun. And it didn't matter. Like if everybody else thought that that was the best show they've ever seen in their life of me or whatever, because I was, I had monitors all around me and I couldn't hear anything because sound rises. 
So literally everything is just going up into the clouds in the air. And it's like, I can't even hear myself singing. I can't hear what I'm playing on guitar. Like I can't hear anything. All I hear is people laughing and talking and whatever. And I mean, we're talking about an entire resort full of people that just want to hear live music. And I'm like, Oh, hope this doesn't sound like crap tonight, but it it ended up being good. I guess. I mean, I I've watched back like a video or two here and there and I'm like, yeah, it's all right. But I mean, not, not one of my better performances, but anytime anybody performs outside, sound rises and it's not any good. So yeah, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird experience outside versus inside. It's yep. it's like night and day. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've I've been in that same same boat. Um, we did a musical play. We did 1776. So we're all dressed in the 1760 uh, uh, 76 attire with the wigs and you know and the, our hands here and everything and uh a fortress was actually next to the, the outdoor stage and uh sometimes they would like the cannons go off so we're singing and you're just hearing <laughs> 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 so we just take it as a child sing louder <laughs> <laughs> we will win <laughs> and it's just <laughs> <laughs> I go, I think they're trying to tell us to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just hurry and sign the declaration. We'll be done. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, my gosh. It was. There was quite the cannons going off and everything. And <laughs> so we all looked around. And <laughs> it's hard to hear the piano because you're hearing a big <laughs> explosion. <laughs> so we're all like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it was practicing. Yeah. Someone went and told them, so it wasn't actual performance. Because <laughs> oh I'm sure we would have done the same thing. Everyone just sing loud for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get let's get back to <laughs> other things. Um, what are you looking most forward to for uh, 2023 as a singer songwriter? Oh. Wow, you're like you're like hitting us with like these like epic questions. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Brian, you go. You have a lot of exciting stuff that is coming out. What do you got going? All right. Um. So once again, cheap plug on the book. Uh, Wrestling with life, rocking all night. The Brian Hardy story: A tale from the stage to the ring and behind the curtain. Um. So um, I plan on doing a lot of touring this year with this book. Um, I'm going to hit a bunch of different uh, places. I'm going to hit all the Barnes and Nobles and all that other kind of stuff. And I'll be doing book signings everywhere around the United States. And um, my brand new country EP worth a shot just came out. Um, So I've released four full length albums between the category of punk rock, surf rock, whatever anyone wants to call it. I, I don't even go into all the genres like everybody goes into. I'm like, when it comes to music and people talk about music, I'm like, there's good music and there's bad music. That's all there is to it. There's no, like, I don't, I'm not going to categorize everything by a million genres. It's rather, it sounds good and you like it or it sucks and you don't like it. So, um, but <laughs> worth a shot was cool. I uh, just got done recording that. So it actually came out, I want to say uh, New Year's Eve of 2022. So 12, 31, 2022, and I will be spending the entire year this year um, basically t- touring all, all around the United States, playing songs off of that EP and stuff off my other old albums and everything like that. And then um, hopefully back in the studio by November, December for another release, maybe a Christmas album this year. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. There you go. So that's awesome. That's a lot of traveling. It's a whole lot of yes, travel. It is. Lot of I feel traveling. like I feel like I was so bogged down by the pandemic that I didn't get to do a whole lot of traveling. So it kind of kept me home for a bit. And um, I just can't wait to get back out on the road. And now that I've got a new book and a new CD to you know represent all over the country. I was actually just talking to a friend tonight from California and he's like, dude, you're gonna play the whiskey again. We're gonna go to the rainbow, we're gonna do this, we're gonna and I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm cool with that. Like, let's set it up. Like, guys, <laughs> let's set up all the shows we can for the year. Like I'm not you, opposed to anything. You definitely have to vlog it. 
Definitely. Yeah, so yeah, road trip, you know, with yeah. the little cars going around. <laughs> Definitely. So it's on YouTube. I don't even know if I talked about this last time or not, but yeah. on YouTube. So there's like three different places to find me on YouTube. You can find me under Brian's wrestling collection for all the wrestling related stuff. And I'm actually starting to read some chapters of my book. I think I've only read two so far um, off out of, uh, off that page, off the Brian's Wrestling Collection page. So you can listen to me read chapters one and two. Then I've got my Brian Hardy music page where you can find all my music videos and all my, you know, different tour vlogs from over the years and stuff like that. And then my family has a show called House of Hardy on YouTube, which I didn't advertise oh, last time. I felt so dumb about not doing it because you kind of get <laughs> to see me in real life behind the curtain or off the stage, you know, not enter Mr. Entertainer guy. You get to just see like, me being a dad and doing stuff with my wife and my kids and everything. Okay. Like that. It's cool. That's really cool. Destiny. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I actually, I, I did start off um, the year with uh, a couple of um, different commissions. Um, so the first one, um, I kind of shifted a little bit from doing vocal into doing more like musical composition. Um, so I was commissioned to do the theme song for, um, a TV show called Eerie Travels, um, with Mark and Carrie Muncie. They talk all about different, um, cryptids, hauntings across the U S, um, and their books are all over stores. And so they needed a theme song. So I did that for them. And then in January, they were contacting me again because they now have a podcast, um, Eerie Travels and Eerie Adventures. So I did uh, my first theme song for a podcast this year. And then um, I was also hired um, by an author, uh, Michael Cooper, to do a theme for his book series that's coming out. It's a three book series, going to be a four book series. So I had to create a piece for that that sort of encompassed the idea of all three stories. Um, so it's very, they're all very like... Um, the one was actually a little more kind of synth wave sort of feel, but still a little on the, the spooky side, the eerie side. Um, and then the second one was a lot more like symphonic um, sort of feel. So I've kind of like transitioned a lot into doing a lot more like composing, more instrumental. Um, and then I'm also doing like a lot more covers. Uh, I just finally invested in a new microphone because uh, I had this one for years that was just horrible that I was like, I need to join the party and get a nice one. Um, so I got, I joined the, uh, the sure microphone party. I got a SM seven B and it's, it, it's amazing. Oh my God. It's night and day. And I was like, why have I not done this like years ago? So, um, definitely planning a lot more like covers. Um, if all goes well, I might have an album out later this year. I might do like a Halloween kind of related album later in the fall. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm doing a lot more like composing like instrumental music. Um, but maybe I'll add some vocals to that too. So yeah. Awesome. That's Very a key <laughs> Welcome to the Spur family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's an incredible sound. I, yeah. I had had another microphone before and it was it was okay, but it's there's no comparison with this thing. I'm like, wow, I've been missing out. So I'm, That's I'm glad I my my stage shows I use all shore. So I'll use like a 58 if I'm, you know, singing or I'll use the super 55 if I'm singing, or I will use the 57 for my guitar amp and stuff like that. But every, every microphone on stage for me is usually sure. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yep. I, I have no microphone. I'm just loud. <laughs> <laughs> You're just projecting it out there for the world. Just projecting so everyone hears me. Uh, <laughs> um, you can just okay, catch I'll, me singing in, you can just catch me singing in public and generally. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Um, as we wrap it up on Dana Palooza, anything you want to say or promote? Um, well, uh, again, um, for any of you that are interested, uh, in work, um, I, my name is Destin Beard. Um, I have two albums that I produced, uh, with Midnight Syndicate on my website, uh, Dark Masquerade and The Time Forgotten. Um, basically if you really want to get into the Halloween spirit, but also want to have like almost like a musical theater meets movie soundtrack, uh, it's definitely the feel for those two. Um, 
Also, if you like synthwave with a little bit of rock mixed in, I have a couple of um, collaborations that I did with um, Sam Haynes and Gary Bennett um, out of the UK. Uh, great guys, great musicians. And uh, if you want to hear some of my instrumental stuff, you can go on my social medias, which are listed on that awesome bar below. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so definitely subscribe. Um, I'm going to be doing, like I said, a lot of covers now that I have this new microphone that I'm super excited for. So I'm keep track of all that. Awesome. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at yeah. Brian Hardy Music, at Brian's Wrestling Collection, both pages. Um, go on Amazon, buy Wrestling with Life Rocking All Night, the Brian Hardy story, 130 pages crazy tales i mean literally tales of sex drugs rock and roll all that crazy <laughs> stuff and and more 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 than anything you can imagine possible in that book and um honestly yeah pick up worth a shot at your uh, local record store and if you don't have it at your local record store in your town then tell them to contact us and we'll get some copies out there doesn't matter if you're east coast west coast or out of the country uh, that's pretty much it. I just want to say thanks for uh, having me as a guest tonight on Dana Palooza. Uh, and it was absolutely awesome hanging out with you guys. Yeah, you too. And thank you too, Dan. This was awesome. Thank you. Everyone keep watching Dana Palooza. Next week, uh, we have uh, Christina Chickas, uh, movie uh, film actress. And then we have our first guest from the UK, um, Lady Ginger Lust, who is a model. So that'll be our first uh, United Kingdom guest. Everyone take care. Have a good night. <laughs>